morning everyone my name is simran chaudhary and i welcome you all on behalf of voice of healthcare to a special podcast series immunity talks protecting public health this podcast series is dedicated to raise awareness and promote the critical importance of vaccination in safeguarding public health so as we dive into the discussion today we aim to highlight the latest advancements challenges and the strategies in immunization all while addressing the barriers to achieving widespread vaccine coverage this year's theme is immunization protecting our future which deeply resonates with our mission to ensure that every individual regardless of age or background understands the vital role that vaccines play in preventing the spread of infectious diseases and protecting our communities and for today's episode we have with us as our guest dr joel b disuza from holy family hospital a pediatrician welcome to our show sir thank you for having thank me you here, so before we proceed i just like to give a brief introduction about uh, dr disuza so dr joel b disuza is a highly skilled and dedicated pediatrician with over a decades of experience in managing the healthcare needs of newborns children and adolescents with advanced training in pediatric nutrition and vaccinology dr disuza is committed to providing comprehensive and up to date care for his young patients his affiliation with prestigious profession bodies like indian academy of pediatrics and the national neonatal forum reflects his ongoing commitment to the field of pediatric medicine so without any uh, you know uh, any more uh, wasting of our time i would like to jump to a question because uh, we both know how important is this month this topic which we are talking about especially this uh, ever evolving new diseases we are getting every month every day you know even while we are talking some new diseases some new virus is surfing on on i don't know where and we get to know about it so so i would like to know since you are highly experienced in neonatal and uh, so the newborn babies so i would like to know for parents who are not familiar about this vaccine vaccination and the schedule which has to be followed could you explain what a uh, childhood immunization is and why is it essential for every child's health and development specifically in rural areas because people there are not much educated and aware about it absolutely simran so let me begin with the basics of what is a vaccine now a vaccine is either a bacteria or a virus or in layman terms we'll just say some kind of a germ which is modified in the lab which prevents the disease in a way that the body once injected into the body the body recognizes parts of the virus and makes cells the fighter cells which are called antibodies against those infections now when the child is actually getting the bacteria or virus the actual bacteria and virus the body recognizes that earlier it had stored some of these antibodies and helps to protect the child by releasing them and they fight the actual bacteria and virus or the germs so that's why vaccination is very very necessary in today's world and it has been developed in such a way that it helps the children from some very devastating conditions now the question about why in rural areas because as we know more than 60 to 70% of the population is in rural areas and that is why it is even more important and it, the government of india is doing a wonderful job at that by providing free vaccinations to children from the age at birth up till the age of 5 years and i think that uh, requires a lot of efforts not just by the government by the healthcare workers healthcare providers who are working on the ground constantly supporting this these kind of initiatives by the government absolutely i mean uh, the, the government of course has to have these people and they are the backbone of this vaccination uh, drive which we have in all areas of uh, india and they are the backbone truly truly they are and that involves you also dr disuza the kind of yeah, we, we are all, we are a team we are a team we are all part of a team so it's a team effort and and that's the best way of going forward you said it right you said it right 
So since we're talking about the vaccination schedule and how people understand are not much aware and educated about this, so government is doing such kind of initiatives. So can you outline the key vaccines that are part of the standard immunization schedule for children in India and why each of these vaccine is important and what kind of importance does this hold? Sure. So the vaccine in India is uh, under the national immunization program, as we all know. So the government of India provides free vaccination to around 12 conditions, which are devastating. One of it is BCG, which is for tuberculosis, oral polio and injectable polio, which we all know what polio is, hepatitis B, diphtheria, which is a condition which causes high grade fever and a bad, bad throat in which children land up in the ICU for that. Pertussis, which is whooping cough, tetanus, which we all know about. H influenza B, which is also a big, big concern for pneumonia. And uh, we have seen babies, you know, crashing because of that. Rotavirus, which is a big cause of diarrhea in the neonatal period. Pneumococcal diseases. Pneumococcal is uh, basically the pneumonias. Measles rubella and Japanese encephalitis where uh, lately we had seen some rise of cases of Japanese encephalitis and uh, these are basically the 12 which the government of India provides free and it is absolutely necessary for your children to get these vaccines. So uh, unconnecting question on this does as we know uh, with evolving times and things evolving new diseases new viruses are coming around. So do you think that kids, uh, children, newborn babies are also supposed to get vaccine for COVID or like the WHO has uh, announced M Ox a global emergency? So do you think that there is need of these vaccines as well to be added into these kind of this, this schedule? See, regarding Mpox, what you need to know is that uh, it is uh, uh, something which is closely related to uh, which earlier, which is now uh, no longer there, and that is smallpox. Now, smallpox mm -hmm. was, a, was a devastating disease in the early 1900s, 1972, 1977. That's where India had it. And uh, in the 1980s, uh, where, you know, WHO said that we were smallpox free. And India was around 1979 was the last case. So, I mean, we could get rid of smallpox only because of vaccination yeah. and same way for polio polio is declared india free now almost 12 13 years last case was in 2011 or so so i mean if we can do that and we have proved that we have done it i mean i'm sure that that is the way to prevent you said it right that is the way to do it because uh, problems like diseases like hepatitis and polio and these kind of stuff we can eliminate if we are protecting our generation from the birth and once they are protected from the birth they our country can be free from those kind of diseases see what we need to understand is that a disease is not only for one one maybe one child or one person it yeah. causes a burden to the entire society Okay. Now, if you are vaccinated and if you are healthy, you have a healthy nation. It's as yes. simple as that. Okay. You reduce school absence. You you reduce the loss of working days. You improve the quality of life. And most importantly, you prevent complications of these diseases, which not only puts a burden on that person, but even the family, even the society, and ultimately the nation. You, you said it right. So uh, I have met around few people, few parents around, not much, but yes, few in my in my life that they say ki, uh, we have not vaccinated our kids, uh, not even the single uh, injection, you call it. And now they're 20, 25 years old. They are living an absolutely perfect life. We do not believe in this. Uh, this kind of medicines and stuff, we live natural life and these kind of things. And some have that myth that, you know, vaccination causes some side effects and things like that. So there are many myths and misconceptions around this childhood vaccines. So what are some of the most common myths you encounter and how do you address them with the concerned parents? See, uh, See uh, in, in today's world 
and even in developed countries there are many people even in the united states who say that you know we don't want to vaccinate a child this is just a hype and it's just because the company wants to make money and all that kind of stuff but we have definitely proved that vaccination is the way to go okay yeah. over and over over the years and over decades we have proved that now uh, we need to understand that the vaccine is not just introduced inside uh, the society just in a day or two it undergoes rigorous trials over a period of many years okay so even before the lab testing this an exploratory phase which is done for the vaccine and then after that it starts pre clinical trials and then after that there are clinical trials okay now many parents come with the concern that okay the baby will get some fever with the vaccine simply mm-hmm. to understand any medicine anything made by man cannot have no side effects everything will have a side effect but we have to weigh the pros and cons what is that? is it safer for your baby to get fever for a day or is it safer for your baby to land up in the icu it's as simple as that okay now there are very common side effects which are seen by vaccine or by any injection maybe such as a pain or a mild fever okay of course there are rare complications which can happen like some major allergic reaction but that's like maybe one in a million cases which could happen with anything okay now the usual myths which we usually see in uh, okay can my child get some allergy because of that and the allergy will stay lifelong no okay and this has been proved and this proved by many journals such as the lancet okay another concern with parents was because there were few studies done in in, in the early uh, 1990s where it said that some vaccines were connected with autism which is a condition seen in children which has also been disproved over the years okay so these are some myths which parents hear from other people they have no idea and are not well read about it but these are yes concerns which we as pediatricians or as healthcare providers try to elevate by the parents but at the end of it i think so that if you see the broader picture the vaccination and we all know that it has been proven safe over the years and there are very mild side effects which are maybe immediate such as maybe pain or little bit of fever but nothing which you know is major and will cause a, the child to suffer in the long run also you must understand that many parents say that you know okay why should i give a vaccine i'm getting breast milk my my milk has the you know fighting power and the immunoglobins and everything which my baby needs you breast feed a baby for 6 months mm-hmm. and what after that see the vaccinations help your child over many years your breast milk helps the child in the first Six to nine months, and then after that, the immunity gradually wanes. So yes, your breast milk is definitely, definitely something which is needed for your baby and is absolutely wonderful. But you have to think, what after that? Yes. So I think there are still many myths and misconception around uh, in parents' mind specifically. that we together this voice of healthcare with our initiative of this podcast and the, uh, with you and more many other episodes with other doctors are spreading this awareness that these misconceptions are just another myth not a reality not a fact and this will lead to a bigger problem for nation absolutely and i think so you are doing a good job by educating the people in this way and i think so this this education is needed for everybody thank thank you for that so uh, there is another concept called herd immunity so can you explain what exactly is herd immunity and how vaccinating so, children contributes to protecting the wider community including those who cannot be vaccinated absolutely so i'll take an example which you gave me that you know my child is now 25 years and he's not had any major thing that's because 90 95% of the population is vaccinated hmm and that's why your child has not gotten so yeah. someone has got it okay some child has got an immunization and that's why your child is being protected so it works like say there are 100 children okay and from that your 
giving vaccine to 90% of children. 90% of the children who have been vaccinated have the antibodies against that virus or bacteria, whatever. They act as a barrier or they help protect the other 5 or 10% by not letting that disease be in the community. So out of those 5 or 10 children who have not been vaccinated from the 100, those 90 children are giving some kind of protection. It will not be 100%, but some kind of protection where there is a delay to the child getting the disease. So herd immunity basically helps the non-vaccinated children get some kind of protection. It is not a complete protection, please do mind. It's some amount of protection from the disease. So many, many people who, who argue this way that, you know, okay, my child has not been vaccinated. Yeah, because the rest, most of the population is vaccinated. And that's what's happening with even polio. Even in India, there are few communities and few pockets who don't still vaccinate their babies, who don't go for the vaccines. And they are protected because of our pulse polio immunization, which is going on, which is a great success by the government of India, which vaccinates majority of the children. And there is a role of vaccination involved in this herd immunity, like you just explained, because other people are vaccinated. Yeah, I mean, see, your child is protected but it's not a complete protection. That That's one thing which the people should understand. So it does not mean that your child cannot get it. It's just because there are other children who have been vaccinated that your child is protected to some extent. That does not mean you don't need to vaccinate your child. You definitely do need to vaccinate your child. So there are few people who are not vaccinated and then uh, they cause risk to public health and you know the spread of virus more the more chances if more people are not vaccinated. So what exactly is the risk to public health if children are not vaccinated? And can you share some examples of the disease that were once prevalent but have controlled or eradicated through vaccination? Although we just talked about this polio, right? So like polio is completely out of India, but we're still yeah. continuing polio drives because of you know these pockets of people who have not been vaccinated or mm -hmm. You know, vaccine which can, like for instance, smallpox, it has spread to other places. COVID spread to other places. So, so there are countries beside of us, our neighbors, who still have polio prevalent. So we are trying to protect our children from polio by having these drives. Another good example is smallpox. Smallpox was completely eliminated from the world in around 1980s when WHO said that we, the whole world is smallpox free. So these are very strong examples saying that, you know, we can do it through vaccine and we should do it through vaccinations. And the risk, I mean, definitely we all know about polio. It is a, it's a devastating thing. Smallpox was a devastating thing. Okay. So these, these conditions, if prevalent, we know what COVID did to the economies of the world. Yes. And it was, it was a small virus. Okay. I mean, if a small virus can do that, I mean, isn't it safer to just vaccinate us against it and prevent it from happening again? Yeah, yeah. And I think we can do this with the advancements in the latest technologies, which our country is coming up with, with new development of vaccines and how together they are working constantly on these kind of, you know, uh, way out to help and to eradicate as much as we can especially to find out the solutions of the new diseases like mpox and uh, these kind of stuff like which is coming out so and thank you so much dr d'souza for coming to our platform and sharing your insights and knowledge with us this matters a lot means a lot to aware our public about the importance of immunization thank you so much simran for having me thanks a lot